Welcome to The Warehouse. Have you ever heard a sermon and thought, how in the world did he discover that? Or where did he get that idea? Every week at Cornerstone Church, two teams dig into the biblical text that'll be taught during our weekend services. We spend hours talking about the text, the context, the culture of the time, you name it. But you can't stuff all that into a 30-minute message. That's where we come in. We're going to show you the stuff in the warehouse that didn't make it to the stage. Well, hey, welcome back, guys. Morgan, good to see you again. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's your favorite local restaurant? Ooh, that's a good question. Hmm. Well, this is a tough answer for me because the one that I really liked is gone now. Ooh. I loved Jeremiah's Kitchen. Oh, that was that one of my favorite one. places to go. Uh, Pastor TiVo and I, we would always go and we would get a Euro. They had good fish. They had all kinds of stuff there that we liked. But I'd say now, uh, I like I like Benny's a lot. I'm a big Italian food mm. guy. That's a good place to go sit down, have pasta, have a pizza, something like that. But yeah. Jeremiah's you, Kitchen, mm, mm. deep in my heart. Pour one out. Yeah. What was your go-to or what is your go-to at Benny's? Mm, they have a stuffed, stuffed shells that I really, really like. Yeah, that's See, good stuff. I like things that are stuffed. Oh, yeah. Shells, crusts. Yeah, it's always yeah, yeah. good. You can't go yeah. wrong. That's not bad. So for me, I, thinking about this question is a tough one because do I go quality of food? Do I go atmosphere? Mm. I went a little sentimental and I'm going to say Red Lobster. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> Red Lobster can be sentimental. What are these people no, laughing no, no, no. For? I'm laughing because I thought we were going to do like local restaurants, not oh, just like places. That, wait a minute. Like in yeah, local. Like yeah, local, local owned. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Small business. Yeah. Red Lobster. <laughs> Red no, Lobster, I can totally. I can I can downshift. Well, okay. I didn't know we were gonna that was not part of the thing. Mm. Local, I just thought in the tri state area. Okay. But so uh teaching my kids how to break a crab leg open mm. properly. And then for the first time when Jeremiah was in like third grade and he's like, Look, Dad, and it's just crack and he's just bringing the crab <laughs> leg out of this thing. Maybe my maybe the moment I realized I can do this father thing. Oh. Yeah, I can do it. How old was he? It was like third grade. Okay. Yeah, just broke into that thing. So Um, 10 years of fathering experience, and that is the moment. uh, He's almost 18 now, and that's probably still the high water mark. (laughs) (laughs) And you almost interrupted this story. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But, okay, so shift. Local. You know, I I used to work with... Mackie's son. Mm. And yeah, I, I love some Mackie's thin crust pizza, man. Give me that M train all day. <laughs> How about you, Steph? Okay, so I love food. I think this has been something that people really know about me. So I would like to do categories, please. Oh, come on. So breakfast, you can catch me at the vault. Okay. Right? okay. Coffee, crown brew, right? Or cold blooded brew by TJ is super good, but that's in Murphy. And, but they are opening one here, aren't they? Anywho. I don't know coffee. I don't know if we get to announce that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Actually, TJ, you are opening one in there. We would really appreciate it next. if you could do that next to Cornerstone. Next month. It's smooth. That would be great. Um, And then, let's see. Lunch spot. I really do love some Thai. So... I can't pick between the two. I Ooh. love them both. It depends mm. on what I'm going to get at Bon Thai or at Thai D. So mm-hmm. I get different mm-hmm. things at both restaurants. And yeah, dinner. I really like seasonings. Hmm. I bad. like food. Yeah. If if you guys ever want to talk food. Ooh, ooh, Asian Star is really good too. If you want Chinese. She likes Asian Star as well. I could keep going. <laughs> yeah. <Dessert? laughs> Soon we're just going to have every local oh, spot. Oh, Dessert. No, oh, Drizzle Donuts is mm. really good. If, in, she, if she, it's a food truck. Oh, could be anywhere. I didn't know it, yeah. yeah. If where, she where has it now? open and ready, like that's... That's the place. That's that's a good dessert. I do like a good donut that's mm. drizzled. Um, awesome. Uh, f- if you'd like to sponsor us in any, other, <laughs> any of the restaurants that we have mentioned here today, uh, reach out to us. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have sponsors, but we will gladly take yeah. sponsors. Especially you, TJ. All right, we're going to be in Matthew 25, 14 to 30 today. We're in up and to the right. This is week, 
I don't actually have it written down. Is this week four of up and to, this is week five, up and to the right. The last week of this series, Matthew 25, 14 to 30. How about a big idea? What'd you have, Morgan? I had, I kept it simple. Nice and simple for this one. Serve God with what he has given you. Mm. Simple, yet eloquent. Mm. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, so me and Morgan actually had one very similar. Mine was, I'm, am I serving Christ and what he has given me? So I'm going to share Parker's this week. His is, God is pleased when we grow what he has entrusted to us and hates when it is wasted. Mm. Mm. Boy, that was good. Yeah, it was. Uh, we've been entrusted. We're either active and invited or afraid and absent. <clears throat> That's good. I couldn't think of a good A word for invited. So you know how much I love alliteration. How about some context for Matthew chapter 25? Well, I kind of started this the other day, didn't I? Yep. That was kind of new. And, and I just, <laughs> just for the, from the last few ver, uh, chapters in Matthew, Matthew 23 ends with Jesus' lament over Jerusalem. He says, How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. And then Matthew 24, Jesus talking about the destruction of the temple, the second coming. At 24 ends with Jesus telling his disciples that no one knows when the end will come. And straight into chapter 25, where he gives these these parables, the first one being the parable of the ten virgins is how it's usually categorized uh, above the fold if if a Bible's going to have like the little section headings. Uh, so ten of them, they uh, some of them didn't have oil in their lamps. They weren't prepared. They weren't ready. They weren't looking forward to the groom coming. And so that's kind of the, the, right, the thing right before this parable. You guys have other context things? You want to go or me, Morgan? Go for it. <clears throat> um, so the main point of this parable is clear. Our readiness for Jesus' return is determined by our stewardship of the resources that he has given us. So we need to hold on to that part. Um, and I loved how you brought up the 10 virgins mm. uh, aspect above that. So still to this day, that's um, something that, you know, wedding culture, bridegroom thing is still very relevant and waiting Anywho. Mm. and then this is one of the three talks about his coming and i loved how i think we got to discuss it yesterday but all of it basically ends with we don't know when he's coming mm. and so i enjoy that and then parker pointed out how this is part of the olivet discourse which it has multiple other names but this is jesus's teaching to the disciples about the future things as they sit on the Mount of Olives. Hmm. Always fun to know that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Olivet. Olivet. They were around a bunch of olive trees. Hmm. How witty. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have anything? I add? I think you guys nailed context. I don't really have much else to add. Um, or if anything, really. Yeah. All right. We've been in Matthew for yeah. a good minute. So, <laughs> yeah, and we've been living here. Yeah. And this leads into the Matthew's account of Jesus's last supper and the betrayal and all in chapter 26. Yeah. So good. Awesome. Well, here we go. Matthew 25, this section, we're going to go verses 14 to 18. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. So... It'll be like a man going on a journey. We think journey, and I think I'm going on that 35-minute journey back down home to Cyprus to visit family. Not so much. So this idea of the journey was going abroad. So it wasn't a weekender. He wasn't going on a flight and coming home Monday. He was out. He was going to a different country. Yeah. He was 
hidden away for a long time. Yeah. So a talent here is not talking about the gifts that we have. Talent is talking about um, how it refers to a unit of currency, which was the highest unit of currency among the Jews at this time. So I was kind of like taking us. Well, not mm. just the Jews. Yeah. It's the entire Roman hmm. yeah. civilization. Right. Yeah. That's that very important. Yeah. And we've, we've, we've adopted that, right? To mean, we've adopted the word talent to mean those things. Mm -hmm. But here we sometimes forget on this side of the New Testament, right? That, that then it did mean a whole lot of cash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some we (laughs) read said like 20 years, 15 years, 75 years, which we definitely are saying not 75. Didn't we all agree on that? (laughs) Probably. So, yeah. So what a talent was, one talent would have been equivalent to so conservatively, 20 years mm-hmm. wages. Yep. Mm-hmm. So think of your wage, unless you're an intern and you're not making anything right now. Uh, so think of your household income, what your household income growing up, and go 20 years of that. And that's what one talent was. Yeah. yeah and it's important not to stick to like, you can make 50 grand a year. And so 50 grand a year times 20, you know, that is the important part. Regardless, like it's not, well, they only made $5,000 a year sure. or whatever. It was. Yeah, the amount of money doesn't matter. It's more about the, it took 20 years to obtain. Right. This is 20 yes. years of work. Yes. You know, the amount of money, it doesn't matter. You know, you make this, you make that. But this was 20 years of labor that is is considered one talent. Yeah. And then you look at these guys and one was given five of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You think of uh, if you were given a check that would empower you to go on a 20 year vacation. What would that check be? Mm. And that's the amount. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And one dude was given five, five. of those. Yeah. yeah. And I know Jay already talked about the journey part. Um, another translation used the word traveling. It suggests that the Lord has only gone away for a season and that he will return when his purpose in going into the far country is accomplished. Mm. So this is a parable and they always tell like one main story, but there is like some shadowing of this is that the, um, the man going on a journey is some believe Jesus going away and that he will mm. return and he will come back for his servants. His, yeah. 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 That's kind of the thrust for us, right? Is uh, the man, the master going on a journey mm-hmm. who call his servants, servants there. Uh, a lot of versions would put bond servant. Mm-hmm. The word in the Greek is doulos. It's, it, it is someone who was a slave, a, a servant. Yeah. An important kind of reminder, something that I don't even know if I mentioned in exegesis, but as I was studying is that this is not necessarily, we need to remember that slaves and servants of that time aren't exactly Mm -hmm. what we would think of in modern terms. Like they would have been entrusted with great tasks Uh and ones like this, where it's, they're given huge sums of money and told, Hey, go make me more or Hey, you know, go invest this or whatever. And it's, so it's not a weird thing to see this being done. Yeah. Yeah. So we think, So to think of it less as the American form of slavery of up until the 1860s and more what Joseph did. Joseph in the book of Genesis, a servant in Potiphar's house, but at the same time, he was running Potiphar's house. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Carson said, um, for it is not enough for Jesus followers to hang in there and wait for the end. They must see themselves as servants who improve that their master entrusts them failure to do so proves they cannot really be valued as disciples at all. Mm-hmm. It's not enough to hang in there. Right. Man, oh man. That, yeah. That quote hits me because how many times that I have even, even answered, Hey man, how's it going? Hanging in there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so we're going to read about a, or we have read about a couple guys who are given the opportunity not to just hang in there. Uh, and so, yeah, they were entrusted, entrusted. Uh, and so this idea from one of the commentaries I read, so that there were two courses. So the master's going on a super long journey. He's going to be gone a long time. There were two two possible ways for him to allocate his wealth. One was this, is to give to the to, to his servants and have them act as his uh, his representatives in the in the workplace and in, in the community with fields, with, with riches, with resources. 
and to get have them go and do what they can with it yep. and and make more. And the other was for he could have just gone, you know, to the local bank and he said, "All right, here's my money. You can use it and then you're going to give me a fee, you're going to give me interest mm-hmm. on it mm-hmm. when I get back." And so those those two options are played out in this story and those were real world things that happened in that day. There were two options and we see both of them uh, one of them just spoken about at the end, but for the one who was given five and the one who was given two, we see real world evidence of what was going on yeah. in, this, in this parable. Yeah. And so back to like them, you know, five, two and one. So the main part there is according to his ability, mm. they all didn't receive mm. the same amount um, because he did not entrust them all to the same amount. So he knew what their ability was to do mm. with it. Yeah. And the, and the other thing about it is, and this stood out to me, is they're all given based on their ability, mm-hmm. but the one servant who was given one talent, that's still a lot of money. Yeah. So he's still entrusted with a large sum of money. It's a huge amount of trust put in all of them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like he looks at the one and he's like, ah, you're nothing. You know, right. it was just less than, you know, for what he could handle compared to the guy with five. But at the end of the day, they were all entrusted with a really big job. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's good. It's also neat that, that the word for ability, it it also can mean force. So each according to his force. And there's there are some places where it can be used as miraculous power. Mm. I thought that was neat too, that that they had this force about them. But other versions, when they talk about talents, other versions kind of make the mistake of of being specific about money and not just the the grand idea about, yeah, it's 20 years worth, but they try to get in. So the NIV talks about bags of gold. The NLV, the New Living Translation, talks about bags of silver. The contemporary English version just said 5,000 coins. Mm -hmm. And you're like, that's weird. What if those coins are pennies? (laughs) Uh, And God's Word Translation, this is the one where everybody just kind of said, God's Word Translation said $10,000. And so if we had that in our minds, I don't think I could take a vacation for 20 years. On 10 yeah. grand. I, yeah. I, I couldn't do it. Uh, so, and, and also found that in the New Testament, the word meant something different from the Old Testament because the Old Testament, it was weight, right? A talent was a yep. weight of something. Mm-hmm. Uh, from the from the Greek word, I think it was uh, talantin, talantan, I can't remember. It was a large monetary measurement equal to 6,000 drachmas or denarii, the Greek and Roman silver coins. Like you said, the largest unit of currency at the time, uh, the Romans ruling over Jerusalem. So they would have had that in mind that it was the Roman version of what a talent was. Mm. All right. And, and it is, I, it was neat to, to hear this, that the guy who received the two did exactly the same as the guy who did, yeah. who had the five. Yeah. The, well, n- well, we don't know what he did. So I'm sorry, I'm starting. Oh, in the nuts and bolts. Sure, sure, sure. sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah the nuts and but we do know he doubled yeah. it. They yeah. both went and, and bought stamps and resold those <laughs> stamps Stop. and baseball yeah. cards. No. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And we, yeah, we don't know what route they took. Yeah. So we know in verse 16 that the five talents, he went at once mm-hmm. and traded with them and made five talents more. The one that did two, he just made two talents more. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't say he traded. And I think, Morgan, you had something went at once. Yeah. Um, for the first thing with when at once, we see there's a direct action there. So mm-hmm. the master gave them a duty and went at once to do it. And, you know, D.A. Carson, he said the point is that the good servants, they they felt the responsibility of their assignment and they went to work without delay. Yeah. And then even beyond that, we see both of them. And you just mentioned it. We don't know what exactly they did. But the point here wasn't, you know, how they traded it or what they did to double the money with what they were entrusted with. The point was, not what they did, but that mm-hmm. they did it. They yeah. did what did they it. were asked. Yeah. yeah. And you were talking about the weight that is here. Um, so whenever you said the D.A. Carson quote, the good servants felt the responsibility. Yeah. So mm. they felt the weight of what they needed to be doing. Yeah. Um, so I really liked that. I didn't catch that yesterday, but I liked that today. Mm. Went at once. Man, so so we're in a new year. We didn't talk about this at all yesterday, but w- they went at once. I, every year, I've had a the resolution that this is going to be a year that I, I get healthy. Oh. And I, 
Oh, that's right. <laughs> do, do the pull up for those regular listeners. Uh, but so I have this, this desire to get active and uh, build muscle again and, and, and except uh, the alarm goes off. And if I don't go at once to get out of bed and to get after it, then I'm not gonna. Mm. Uh, if I don't, if, if I go at second, I'm not going at all. Yeah. I got to go at once. Have you at once done it yet this year? Uh, in fact, I set her up. In fact, so Monday, <laughs> so this is two weeks ago as you're listening. So Monday, uh, it, it was that. I was up at like 5.50 and clock stuck. Uh, clock struck 6 a.m. And I'm like, all right, I got to go because I know if I don't, I'm not going to. Uh, and so I got up and did some body weight stuff and, and did that Monday, did that Wednesday. And Wednesday, I lost five pounds. Wow. Wednesday. And so I don't know if I had like some water going on. Like you lost the five pound weight that you use or you lost five pounds? See, <laughs> Parker over there just... <laughs> Laughing up a storm on the other side of the barrier. Pretty good. That was good. But no, no, no. I'm really proud of you. Yeah, crazy. That's Um, awesome. Congratulations, man. Muscle does good things as you build. Yeah, Yeah, I'm really proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't mean to be snarky. I I didn't feel snark. Good. I felt it from Parker. (laughs) Definitely not for you. So, but going at at once, that that idea is that they got up and went. Yep. And. I guess it, it would be, have been easy for the guy with five to say, this is a lot of cash. And not to go at once. It would have been super easy. Yeah. So, yeah, he went at once in verse 17. So also he who had the two, that another way of saying that is in the same way. Yeah. So in the same way, he yep. who had two made two more. But he. But, yeah. Yeah. He went and dug. Mm. But he who had one went and dug. Man. So one of the commentaries I read said, so he, he too was not altogether idle. And that's, I didn't key in on that mm. the first time. He was not altogether idle. He in some sort, exor- uh, uh, pardon me, he in some sort exerted himself, not practically in his Lord's oh. service. He exerted himself, but not in his Lord's service. That, reading that commentary kind of just made me uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. And here in a little bit, we'll find out why he did nothing. Mm, like yep. why he dug and he yeah. hit it. Yep. And that thing about digging, when I first read that, I was like, that's weird. Digging a hole for money. Like what in the world? Why are you doing that? You know, you hear people talk about, you know, in modern terms, I put the money in my mattress or whatever. Yeah. But it, earlier in Matthew, we see a parable of the hidden treasure mm, yeah. and the treasure was hidden in a field and in the ground for protection. And that was just, it was common practice yeah. to hide your treasures in your field. And that's where you did it, it, where you hid it. So no one else could find it. No one could get to it. You knew where it was at yeah. and you just knew, oh, it's safe there. That was like a little personal bank. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And even today, Indiana libertarians will bury a certain amount of gold in their, on their property. <laughs> Here's to you. Ron Swanson. <laughs> I thought it was bacon. Oh, he choking, did. choking. Yeah, that was the yeah, that was his go bag. Yeah. Okay, go on. Verses. Uh, done with that section. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? Verses nineteen to twenty three. Now, after, now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them, and he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, <laughs> bringing a hundred years of income forward and a hundred years more saying, master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also, and he also who had the two talents came forward saying, master, you've delivered to me two talents here. I've made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. So it says that um, he returned after a long time. That's what stood out to me at Mm -hmm. the very beginning. 
Um, he returns after a long time. It's just a reminder that these servants, they didn't, they didn't know when he would return. And this wasn't like a, like you said earlier, it's not a quick trip. Yeah. So they were doing these things and they likely, these servants would have even wondered if they would have been able to give an account for what they had done. Mm. So they went to all this work to do it and they're, but they weren't positive that the master was ever going to come back and be like, Hey, show me what you did with the money, you know? So they were doing it in faith that, you know, Hey, he entrusted me with this. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. And they weren't even positive that they would ever get credit for it, Mm. which I thought was a really cool thing that they, you know, the verse of after a long time, you know? Yeah. I read a commentary that said, imagine the scene this way. The man's eyes are sparkling. He's bubbling over with enthusiasm. He's thoroughly thrilled And Sid invites his master in to start counting, like Mm. what all he has brought to him. Like after a long time, could you imagine? Immediately he went out, and not immediately, at once he went out and he traded and he made the money back. Could you imagine like doubling your income or your thing or whatever it is for the, the ward or the master in this situation? And you would want to share that with him. You would want to show him like, look what I've done. And so... That's how I picture it. Well, that's good. And so, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. So verse 21 and verse 23 are the same. Yeah. Yep. They say exactly the same. One brings in 10 talents. One guy brings in Four, Four talents, and they get the exact same response yeah. from their master. And not only that, they give the exact same sentence at first. Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I've made two talents more. They say exactly the same thing. And the master responds in the same way. Exact response. That, that struck me. Yeah, I mean, they're given two very different amounts of money back, yeah, yeah. one much larger than the other, both still large, but one much larger than, than the other. And you see like this this really cool idea that the master didn't necessarily care about how much money it was. It was more about that they had been faithful with yeah. what they were given because they get the same exact response. And it's just, it's so cool to see that, that yeah, that one had five, one had two, and one brought back 10, one brought back four, but they get the same exact response of, well done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And the servants, um, this is not the servants portion that they're asking. I mean, at the very end, enter into the joy of the of your master. Um, but the master's portion shared with the faithful servants. So n- not so much that we shall have a joy of our own as that we shall enter into the joy of the Lord. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So it wasn't, hey, now you've you've earned the highest level of joy that a bond servant can reach is kind of what you're you're saying. It's no, 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 no here. Come enter into my joy. Yeah. My joy that, that gave you a hundred years wage Mm. and you 40 years wage. Now, yeah, yeah. Come party with me. I was like, wait, you're right. You did math. Good. (laughs) I was like thinking like, no, just like pronouncing words. If you do it with confidence, if you do math with confidence, not many people will realize that you are wrong. That's why I made all the good grades in math. Confidence. (laughs) Confidence. (laughs) And how ironic, though, is it? uh, This just stands out to me. The whenever he says you've been faithful with a little. Oh, that's yeah. That was next for me too. You've been faithful over a little. Um, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) you're talking. I just gave you two hundred years wages. (laughs) <laughs> and I've been faithful over a little. <laughs> yeah. And you didn't bat an eye. Yeah. I give it back to you. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. So little there in verse 23 and right in verse 21. So yeah. 21 and 23. Been faithful over a little. That word puny. Hmm. You've been faithful over a puny amount. Mm. Puny. So elsewhere, that same word is used when uh, a child gives Jesus his fish lunch. Mm. Uh, is loaves and little fish, a few small fish, that same word, a few small fish. Uh, Jesus says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Uh, He who's forgiven little loves little, little puny. (laughs) You've been faithful over a little. 
Yeah, it's so cool. I it love blew that. me away. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I have um, one last thing for this section, but we can say the reward for the first two servants, they received praise from their master. They received a promise of future blessing and they received glory, the joy of Ooh. the Lord. Mm. Ooh, so those three, three little different things that the master said. You've been faithful over a little. So praise. That was a praise. I will set you over much. Promise. Enter into the joy of your master. That's awesome. Glory. Oh, that's so good. That's good stuff. Yeah. Man. And they and that's the thing. Again, I know we've said it so many times, but so much of a difference in how much they brought back. Yep. And yet they get the same response from the master. Yep. They performed according to, to their potential. Yes. And that yes. was what was expected. Yes. Yeah. And we don't want to step too much out of our lane of just exegeting, just talking about the the scripture itself. But man, how many times have I looked across the mm. way and uh, I look at Michael opening the word. I, I look what you talking about uh, Philadelphia in mm. the revelation series and uh, thinking to myself, Holy cow, that was great. I can't, that's not me. I can't do that. Right. Ugh, they've got gifts that I don't have while taking my eyes off how God's blessed me and ha- what he's asking me to work yes. with, I, I have a tendency to look around mm-hmm. and both compare myself to others in, in that competition idea, mm-hmm. but in also in just measuring myself less than what, yeah. what somebody else has. Yeah. Mm. I mean, and, don't we all though, like I think we had a really good discussion about that yesterday, just how we tend to do that. Yeah. We always are comparing ourselves to other, and then we have to stop ourselves in the middle of that. Like, no, no, no. Like, no, God, you've given me this, this, and this. Yeah. So, yeah. If, if, boy, I, I don't know how often that happens. The stopping ourselves from doing that. I think a lot of us go week in and week out. Uh, I mean, maybe we've been given two, and we think everybody else around us has five, and instead mm. of working, uh, working with all we've got with our two. Man, I look around and I think you've got five and I don't have five. So how, how can I do anything? So I'm just yeah. going to show up. I'm going to do the least amount possible yeah. and hang on. Like, D, was it D.A. Carson you said that quote? We can't just hang on. Um, was yes. it Carson? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. wait, hold on. And we just, I think we have a tendency to just hang on. Yeah. Because we're comparing ourselves to yeah. everybody around us. But and then I'm, how reassuring is it that we get the response from the master here, yeah. the same exact one yeah. to both of them? Because we look around, like, just like you said, we look around all the time. We're like, oh, he has five. Oh, yeah. he's so much better than me. But the master gave him the same response. You know, mm-hmm. it didn't matter th- that he had two and he had five. Yeah. It's not sitting idle with yeah. what we have. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. 24 through 27. Or we can just go on into, down to 30 if you'd like. Sure. Sure. Let's hit it. He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, you wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeesh. Yeah, so this is answering the why of why he hid it. He knew him to be a hard man, hmm. um, which could be translated into a difficult man, yeah. um, harsh violent. man, yeah, yeah violent. Um, but like that's not the same guy we see verses up. Right. Yeah, it, it sure know. seems like he had a totally messed up view of his mm-hmm. master. Yeah. Of who he is. Yeah. Um, that just like really hit me yesterday. I was like, man. And then I was trying to think of like comparisons. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Like how many things are we afraid of that we're too scared to get out of our comfort zone or oh, whatever man. it may mm. be 
because the talent here is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. So, you know, we use the um, example of like hiding our sin from people or whatever, mm. but that's not that because talent is a good thing. It's something good that we have within yeah. us that we hide from others. So, yeah. Master, I know you gave me 20 years worth of wages <laughs> and told me to manage it, but I know you to be a harsh man, a violent man, a stern man. Uh, that same, so that same, John 660, after uh, Jesus talks about that he is the bread come from heaven, like he was comparing himself to manna in John chapter six, and people around him are like, this is a difficult saying. This is a hard saying. How can somebody do this? That's that same thing. I knew you'd be a hard man, a stern man, yeah. after just giving years and years and years of wages. Yeah. This is one of my favorite things I pulled out from it yesterday. I'm sorry, Morgan. I think you're going to say no, something. No, you're but good. he's blaming the master for his lack mm, of work, mm, his responsibility. Yeah. So he's assuming the worst and he does nothing with it. He should have just opened a bank account. When he is called out on what he has done, he shifts blame to the master himself, which reminded me of Genesis. Whenever, you know, this is the woman you've given me, like mm. whenever he comes up and he's like, why did you eat of the apple? Yeah. Well, the woman, yeah. she did it. Exactly. And that's the same thing here. Well, you, the master, you're an evil man. You're yeah. a hard man. Yeah. Here. I didn't lose it. Yeah. I didn't yeah, lose it, it. It's still here. Yeah. Blame shifting. Big time. Big time. So I was afraid. And just so in this parable, if we're talking that like Jesus is the master, that we're the ones who's been given the talents. Afraid because of that wrong picture, that wrong image of of what our master is. I, I think, man, I think I get that too often. I mean, how many times did I ever think of Jesus as really being gentle mm. and lowly, mm. like Nathan talked about at the start of this uh, series? And so you think you serve a God who is harsh and stern and violent and unforgiving. And so that's something to be afraid of. Yeah. And how many times do we we do things because we have a wrong view of who yeah. God actually is? Oh, yeah. 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 I, I think maybe a majority of the time yeah. that that people who are trying to be faithful Christians, we go and hide things instead of working with and investing and, and multiplying what God's given us because we have this wrong view of God. Yeah. yeah. Man. I bring it up a lot, but community is like mm. the main thing that I feel like people are just so scared of getting out and doing and it's so good. Yeah. Like once you start investing in others and others investing in you, it's just important for our growth and mm. it helps call us out on our stuff and it helps us grow in ways that we couldn't do if we didn't have others speaking mm. to yeah. us so and good. helping point us in the right directions. Yeah. And so like that to me, like this is what I picture of hiding. Like they're hiding who they are mm. because they're scared yeah. of what could happen or yeah. I, yeah. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, Proverbs tells us uh, as iron sharpens iron. So yeah. one man yeah. sharpens another. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we were designed. Yeah. yeah so we are, we, we're not meant to do it alone. Yeah. But, like God was can't. in community within himself before we were ever created. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, can't do it alone. No, we're not supposed to. Yeah. But when you try to do it alone, because isolation, I think Jay, you've said this, like isolation is easy. Oh Yeah. Yeah, it's it's the path of least resistance. Yeah, yep. definitely. Yeah, it's it's just hanging on. It's it, it's much easier to go and dig, hide your talent in the ground than it is to work work it and invest it and and sharpen it and practice it and go out and do it for God's glory. Yeah, yeah. which this is this parable is not talking about being in community. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> sure. But it's just this is something that is near and dear to my heart. Is that so. right but it does make you wonder if they would have had weekly staff mm. meetings those three it's, all right how are you guys doing yeah. with your you know what's going on uh well i yeah i still in the ground over there where i dug it up what are you, you doing know, <laughs> you know, here let's show you yeah. what we're doing to double what we're doing yeah uh, you know but he gets called a wicked lazy servant yeah 
So that last part was pure conjecture. We're back into it. Yep. You wicked and slothful servant. You know, coming off of you guys talking about groups, I just this just popped into my head and I had it in my notes and I just want to make sure. This was... They, they were judged individually, which I thought was so important, is this was not a group judging. Mm-hmm. This was yeah. not a, oh, look, you guys all brought me this much money. This... So great. Wow. And then Stephanie said it earlier with that quote from Carson of we can't just hang on yeah. as Christians and just make it to the end. Um, this this guy was judged for what he did with yep. what he was given. Yeah. It wasn't just a group. Oh, well, your church did a great job and you were right. a part yeah. of that church. So well done. Yeah. This how, was what did you do? Yeah. yeah. How many of you guys have that nightmare memory of the group project in school and being the person who did all the work. Yep. And there's this one guy who didn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. So the master doesn't say, hey, guys, great job. You yep. brought 15 talents back. Yep. Way to go, fellas. Yep. Way to go. Man, you're doing quick math right now. I'm like, it's That's not right. that hard, but I'm like. <laughs> no, math is hard. 10 plus 4 plus 1. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Shh, don't reveal my <laughs> secrets. <laughs> don't reveal my simple addition. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's fine, guys. It's fine. So, and there, so there again, 27. Then you ought to have done the other thing that is normal during this time. Go invest it and bring me back some interest. I mean, interest on 20 years wage? That would have been all right. Yeah. yeah. And we don't know how long he was gone. Yeah. So it could have been real all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, could have been a good chunk of change. Exactly. Man. Do you guys have anything 26 through 28? Yeah, just the fact of him like, so take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents. Mm. I I don't know. I'm like the whole taking and giving and yeah, my brain processing that. I didn't have any notes on it. <laughs> but yeah. I was just like, man, that's kind of yeah, the one getting, with the most. Yeah, and we're getting into the part of this parable that is so difficult to easily exegete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So hard to just simply explain that there's tension here and there are hard things to talk through. And, and so, and, and if we're honest, we don't know. We don't yeah. know how this thing yeah. ends. We don't know what it means. Does that mean you're cutting me off from saying the thing? Totally cutting you off. No, say the thing. So I'm going to try to do justice to what, like how Michael tried to explain this um, yesterday. Because it looks like in this parable that like at the end he goes to hell, right? But we don't we don't know that. Um, this is a parable. It's to be told as a story for people to understand. Hmm. What we do know in scripture is that God is sovereign, that God is good, that in one hand he is holding you and you can never be plucked out of it. And then in the other hand, we know that there's consequences for things that we do not do, not saying that our salvation is pulled by us not doing our works because we do know that we are secure in our salvation once we accept Jesus Christ. So that's the the main tug. What was that? No. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think you nailed it. And it's just yeah. the idea that we're not trying to get the parable's point was not two go to heaven, one goes to hell. This was not right. a salvation thing. This was a do with what you were given. Yep. Yeah. God gave you 100%. this. Now do this with it. And so it was don't sit idle. Don't just sit there and say, Oh, I don't know what I want to do or what I can do with this, or I have nothing, or these people have more than me. So we want to conjecture, we want to put Oh, this guy went to heaven. This guy went to hell. But that wasn't the point no. whatsoever. So when we try and do that, it's like Michael always says, you know, you get on very thin ice whenever yep. you try and pull all these things out of it. So yep. stick with the main point. The point of the parable is do with what God has given you. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a big enough point. Yeah. And it's right. a, have a right view of the master. Yep. Do with what he's given you. Do it to the best of your ability. Yep. Yeah. I had one more little thing. It was the master who gave the money in the first place. This is not to be seen as an earning of our salvation, but what we do out of love for what we have received. Yes. And that's one of the things that Michael's going to touch on more this weekend is that uh, this idea that at the end, we're going to have to pay again for our sins that we're going to have to, you know, the idea, it was uh, Charlie Cox that brought the idea up that there are folks who believe that when we die and 
we see Jesus, the first thing that's going to happen, he's going to put up on the big screen every time we messed up hmm. uh, throughout our entire life. And and Michael really did a great job, in my opinion, of talking about what really happens. It's before conversion, before we say yes to Jesus, we are responsible yes. for our sin. But after we have said yes to Jesus for the rest of our lives, Jesus is responsible for our sin. Mm. He has paid for it. He atoned for it on the cross. And we don't have to worry about our sin anymore because we're in Jesus. The thing we're responsible for is what to do with what he's given us after that. We're responsible for what we've done after salvation. So from here on out, our sanctification is using what he's given us to the best of our ability Mm -hmm. and then repenting confessing when we get it wrong and getting back the blessing that he keeps giving and work hard and do our best with what he's given us. Yeah, Yeah, that's good. And how freeing is that? You know, it doesn't mean that things are all of a sudden going to be easy or that what you do with what God's given you is necessarily going to be the easiest road in the world. But what it does mean is that, I mean, it's beautiful that Jesus took that sin from us and now we're not going to go to heaven and he's going to look at us and be like, all right, here's the scroll, right. or like you yeah. said, here's the film of everything you did wrong. Like that constant worry and fear is exactly what we're trying to talk against yeah. in this parable. Yeah, well, that's good. And, and so the the guy who had won and went and dug and hid it. So in this idea of up and to the right that that we we've been picturing and trying to walk through these last few weeks. Uh, it's it's just interesting. Uh, Village Church, the way they talk about mm. it, is deep work over time in community. Mm. That's their way of getting up and to the right. But this guy with the one talent, it's like uh, he he started on his X and Y axis. If we're going up and to the right, but he never went up yeah. and he never went right. He buried it right there at the zero line. Whereas the five and the two, they went up and to the right, working with what God gave him with what the master gave him. Yeah. Um, and yet, and so the guy who did nothing, who hid it all and who just hung on, uh, he experienced some discomfort. Yeah. That's the best way to say it. Yeah. And I'm looking forward. If ever there was a week to hear the podcast and then go and find out what the lead dog says yeah. uh, about how to, to think about or how, you know, how he thinks about this passage. This is it. For sure. You know, this is it because we're not going to touch the weeping and gnashing of teach, teeth, teach, teeth <laughs> much at all. No. Yeah. I just wanted to say gnashing of teeth literally means grinding your teeth together. Mm. Which is gross. For those who did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. Me. You guys ever been in the same room with somebody who, who grinds their teeth as they sleep? Mm. It is one of the most unpleasant sounds you will ever hear. I think I do it. Ooh. I think I do it. It's like a haunted house I have, sounds, man. I have dreams where I feel like my mouth is really clenched uh, shut, and it has to be that I'm grinding my teeth in my sleep. <clears throat> well, that's I grew up, my mom did, mm. and she had a mouth guard, but nice. it went through a couple over her <laughs> lifetime because yeah. she ground through yeah. it. But and then there was one time she forgot to put hers in, Ooh. and I'm I'm like two rooms away sleeping, and I'm hearing that. <laughs> Ooh, oh man! Okay, so that <laughs> and the you other thing that. I was trying to figure out was where it is in scripture that people normally go for like the big movie screen that God is going to like mm. show this big reel, and I thought it was in Revelation, but I can't seem to find it. So. Next week, if I'm just bringing up a weird thing that I was like, oh, I found it. That's why. Are you going to try to do a quick search? Let's see. Let's see I what I can do. To. Hey, Morgan, spend just a few moments talking about grinding teeth. No, yeah, please sure. don't. Please <laughs> don't. So if there's any dream experts <laughs> out there, I'm really concerned. Um, <laughs> but actually, I am. Are you really? Yeah, I really am concerned. I have dreams where it feels like my mouth is going to pop. I'm squeezing my teeth so hard together. I bet people have already turned us off. Yeah. And then I wake up and I'm like... Oh, what's going on? Yeah. yeah, so the the great white throne judgment, I think, of Revelation 20 contain the records of everyone's deeds. Okay. Right? Is that what we're... Yep, that's probably um, it. Read it. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, and re- re- if I can read, Revelation 20, verse 12, And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged by what was written in the books, according to what they had done. 
probably as close as we can come to figuring out why some folks think when we die, we're going to watch a movie yeah. screen of what all happened in our life. Um, yeah. So, but the reality is, even if that were so, uh, for the Christian, the joy of even seeing that and and hearing Jesus saying, eh, paid for that one, uh, yep. paid for that one. Yeah. That one was on me. Mm. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. 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 And then saying, all right, now, what'd you do with the talents I gave you? Mm. I'm back. Yeah. What'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, guys? Well, all right, then. What are you excited to hear this weekend? Um, For me, I think that this this parable is one that if it's if it's understood the right way, so... It can be. There's different ways that people can take it or people can see it as a harsh parable. Like, oh my goodness, why did the guy with one get treated so badly? Yeah. Um, but I think understood the right way. This can be a super inspirational parable to those who feel like they don't have a lot to offer. Mm. You know, they feel like, oh, I, I compare or they compare themselves constantly. They see people with more and they're like, what's the point of me even trying? Um, you know, we know we we don't know when Jesus will return. So we see that in the parable as well. But the one thing that we do know and the main point of this is that Jesus has entrusted us all with gifts, mm. every single one of us. And we're meant to show others, you know, their need for him with yeah. those gifts. So are we going to, are we going to sit idle? Are we going to sit and compare? Are we going to look around and say, Oh, they have greater gifts than me. So I'm not going to do anything. Or are we going to step up to the plate? Are we going to, you know, use our gifts to honor God regardless because yeah. we desire to be to be faithful to our creator and to, you know, our savior. Yeah. So I think that this is just an inspirational thing for those who feel like, hey, I don't I don't know if I have much to offer. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Yeah, mine is always similar to Morgan's. I feel like that um again, I'm just really excited for people to hear this and question like, how can I be using the things that God has given me? Mm better to for his kingdom and for his glory yeah um so like stepping out in faith to know that it may be uncomfortable mm. and but god calls us to, to so much more when we're doing the things that he has called us to oh man so That's just be good. obedient yeah yeah i think two for me i think one is is getting a right view of our master uh, that that nathan started in yeah. week one of this series getting that right view of the heart of our master. And then from that, right, not looking around and comparing ourselves to each other. Yeah. Uh, that's so big. And how many times we do that and we just feel crummy. And yet the guy with two doubles his two and it's not doubled five. And yet the same response from the master. Well done good and faithful mm -hmm. servant. And so if your if your high point is by golly, I can sweep the heck out of this floor and I can move chairs like a champ and Jesus is going to one day say, "Well done, good and faithful mm -hmm. servant." In the same manner that he did when he when Billy Graham saw him, yeah, who preached to millions and millions, "Well done, good and faithful servant." The same word, the same uh, stressors on the words, the same exclamation point at the end. Well done, good and faithful servant. Um, enter into your enter into the master's joy. Man, looking forward to it. Well, all right, guys. Thanks again for joining us. It's going to be a good one, man. So you can email us warehouse at cornerstone dot team. You please, if you would, rate, comment wherever you hear this thing. Share. Oh, yes, please share. Tell your friends. You know, it's all right. Listen to these three banter with their and do their maths. Uh, or say horrible, or say words not correctly. Yeah, we don't say horrible words. We say words horribly. <laughs> <There it> <laughs> and on that note, mm -hmm. we'll see you on the flip side. See you on the flippity flop. See you on the flippity flop. Say bye, Nathan. <laughs> Morgan didn't say bye. Bye. I mean, it's too late now. Bye. I mean, it's done. It was cut after. Cut it. Bring it back. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. <laughs>